So allow me to try and explain why Milo thinks I'm an idiot. But will I have to go back to this morning for where that starts? But I think he's got a point. Some good news is I'm an idiot and I just made a huge mistake. And uh, the bad news is there's nothing wrong with the differential and I can start putting it back together. So let's just quickly discuss what happened. I came back from a trail, stopped here, the Jeep was in 4x4, or the front lock, hubs were locked, and I wanted to put Loctite on the bolts, as you saw, I took out the bolts one by one, I had to remove the wheel so it was in the air, and afterwards, after finishing the driver's side, uh, I unlocked the hub, and then locked it again to check that everything was still working smoothly and I turned it, the wheel, the, the, the disc, the brake, uh, I turned it and it was turning the drive shaft which is fine because if you turn it the power goes to the spider gears, to the crown gear, it turns the drive shaft Then I unlocked it, put the wheel back on, lowered it to the ground and I went to the other side which is this side and then on this side I did the same. Uh, so I, after replacing all the bolts, I unlocked the hub and then I relocked it to check that it was locking, turning it and it didn't lock. If I lock the diff up and then <coughs> connection down to the drive shaft, the drive shaft wasn't turning so in my mind it didn't lock. Now some of you may already know where this is going but let me tell you I didn't stop testing there I removed the hub, checked that everything inside was working and that everything was working perfectly so next I went back to the other side, jacked that up locked the hub again, turned it and the drive shaft turned so I unlocked it, came back to the side and, and turned it and it didn't turn the drive shaft so obviously that side was working when it was locked this side should work when it's locked and I tested it a third time and I left it and the next morning I tested it again to be sure and, for, and, and, and so what happened was when I tested that side this side was locked so the side shaft couldn't turn the drive had to go to the drive shaft when I left that side, I left it unlocked, so when I had this side locked and I turned it, that side was not locked, so the drive could go to the side shaft and get, instead of going to the drive shaft. As simple as that. And when I went back testing that side again, I left this one locked, so that side worked. And when I left that side to come and test this side again, I left that side unlocked, just because it was working, there was no problem with it, and I just... So I'm an idiot. And that means I get to spend a couple of days disassembling and reassembling the diff. Uh, the upside on it is I now know exactly what the diff looks like inside. Hopefully not making mistakes again. So if you are not interested in the car stuff, this is where uh, you've heard the story about my stupidity. And you can now sign, now sign off. The bearings are all packed with new grease and uh, ready for installation. So it should be a fairly quick job. It's just cleaning the wipers and uh, or dust seal or what is this called? It sits on the knuckle there. And maybe parts of the diff that I want to clean and then I can start reassembling. So I need to place the seal back on. And they go in this order. Right, so now I have to go underneath it. I removed the tire back there because I need that space. I need to get in there. And uh, I put the tires that I removed back there. I put the tires here. It'll catch it on the rim. On the fair lead will hook onto the rim. If something should go wrong with the jack stands. Should be safe, with some redundancy.
Oh, I did have a gasket on it. I'm going to have to make sure about that. But it, it's broken. This piece is missing. Probably came out when I took the diff out. Right, so I've got it clean, it's in good working order. Not much backlash. Uh, I'm not going to put a gasket on. A friend who's a mechanic advised me uh, to just assemble it with gasket maker. Which I will do. The main problem now will be lying on my back under there. And this is quite heavy, manipulating this into that. I'm gonna have to see how that goes. So I've got both surfaces that need the gasket maker clean. Just wiped, uh, cleaned with petrol and then wiped with an acetone rag. And uh, now it's going to be about the weight. I'm going to have to apply the, 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 the gasket maker. But then I have to lift it up and it's quite heavy. Slide it in. In the correct position while avoiding the brake lines. I need to get the brake line further out of the way. So this side goes on this side. I need to turn it. This side goes on the bottom. Now the problem is my arm's going to be too long and that is going to be too high. I need something lower. As you can hear in the background, it's load shedding, so there's a generator running. This needs to be cleaned. Now, the thing is here, I have to now sort out what is what, and what is, what is the order of operation. What goes on first? Now all of the bearings have been packed with grease. I have to figure out what the order is that everything goes in. That goes, that seals on that. The wheel goes on that.
The bearing needs to go on there. I need to pack that bearing. This goes on in the end with that. Right, I think I have it all figured out. And this one needs to go here. So, if my order of operations is correct, I push in the shaft, I put this over the knuckle, that stub axle something something goes on. So this needs to go through the seal. It's all lubricated. Now it needs to go into that, into the diff, into the splines. Top, bottom, middle, left, right, middle. Lock on. Ah, there it goes. Just alignment probably. Okay, so that bearing is packed with grease. Bearing is in place. The top one has to go in now. Okay, that's in. I'm guessing here, don't do what I do, do your research. I haven't done it, but I'm not going to get up and do it now. So this might be wrong, and then we'll, uh, if it is, I'll let you know. Or someone in the comments will let me know. And uh, I'll tell you all about it on the next one. This is about the minimum amount I can get on. So if it was wrong, it's not wrong by a lot. As far as I remember again, this is up next and I will need the bolts, but So next, a little bit of grease where the seal runs, maybe it should be oil, maybe grease, but again I don't know. Okay, so, now it needs to go in.
Klik. Klik. Right, so that's this side finished. The brake line needs to be connected and the wheel can go on and uh, then we have to bleed the brakes. Now for the other side. I plan to get gear oil into the diff. It's quite a difficult undertaking if you don't have the, the pump that they use for that. Quite a thick oil. <laughs> it's, I think it's because the Jeep is fixed and we can go for a drive. Yes, and the Jeep is mobile again. Milo, come, come off. There you have it. He doesn't want to get off. The Jeep is mobile again. All of the issues fixed. And I just have all of this to clean up and clear up. Oh, the joys of an old car. Anyways, that was a roller coaster ride with the Jeep. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Come on, hello. Come up your backy. Somebody back here. Come. Come. Come.